I would like to give a case from our practice. As hunters, we uh, discuss our cases always. This is a patient of whom, to whom I made a surgery. I wouldn't say that I was correct, probably at all the stages, particularly having listened to Mikhail Lirich, probably will use a different procedure. But I would like to address uh, the audience and to make our discussion more acute. So I will stop uh, uh, within my presentation and vote as to how uh, you would act as compared to me that is a patient on 50 years old she was admitted in January 2015 typical complaint and the colonoscopy in the distal third there was a circular stenosing to seven millimeters a tumor of five centimeters as to CT at this stage we saw that it is 7.5 centimeters perifocal uh, inflammation and increased uh, lymph nodes in the mesenterium and in the omentum uh, uh, tumor one centimeter is diameter and we suspected that uh, that was carcinematosis node. I would like to ask you, what should you do? Uh, first, now, adjuvant chemotherapy, which was advocated by Mikhail Ryurich, and then surgery. Who is in favor of that approach? Please uh, vote. Mikhail Ryurich only, uh, is the only person in this conference room. Uh, symptomatic, yes. A symptomatic uh, tumor. Uh, there was a uh, in this time impossibility stenosing, a uh, long uh, 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 tumor and uh, perifocal inflammation. Only Mikhirovich was uh, in favor of that uh, first option. I also represent the majority. I'm also not uh, in favor of it. Who would make a surgery with uh, an attempt of complete uh, site reduction, then system uh, chemotherapy? Most of you. Probably except uh, Pavel Rachkovsky voted for the second option. And the third, Evgeny Gennadyevich asked whether the tumor is symptomatic. Probably some palliative procedures such as stenting or stoma should be used to provide favorable conditions for long term systematic chemotherapy. Who is in favor? Uh, our, uh, well, employee who works on one quarter, one quarter of the time, you're the only one in that audience, unfortunately. I do not differ from you. Therefore, on the 30th of January, surgery was made, but unfortunately, there were other data that uh, were uh, not similar to the CT data taking into account the symptomatic surgery uh, uh, tumor. I excipated uh, the uh, uh, uterus with the adnex, uh, a mentectomy, appendectomy was also made and uh, a pelvis spiritonectomy because uh, we also found uh, some protrusions, uh, uh, cosmetotic. Uh, Months. A disciple of uh, the 19th and 2000, I also had to add uh, intraperitoneal chemotherapy. I was not aware of LIA uh, studies that were mentioned by Legovanc and Mikhail Yurich, and I was greatly impressed that intraperitoneal uh, 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 therapy. Uh, hemotherapy with metasplatine doesn't affect uh, uh, non relapse uh, survival. But uh, the, the only justification of that procedure, probably azimicin C, is a good drug. That is one of uh, uh, the ideas. But in fact, I also start doubting. There are very few studies that would comply with the principles of evidence based medicine that are used in carcinomatosis. Mikhail Yurich said that we always select patients and we don't know the real state of the art, but uh, at our department, in case of making surgery, in case of carcinomatosis, we had uh, interperitone uh, chemotherapy with metamedicine C, and the surgery was not quite uh, long, and there were no complications. She was dismissed on the naval day, and of course, in order to stage 
we uh, proceeded from morphological study, moderately differentiated in uh, uh, We were growing uh, through the tissues. There was perineval uh, growth, extramural vascular invasion, so the tumor was quite aggressive. Perifocal inflammation was formations of different sepsis and the involvement uh, of the apex of appendix in five of 24 lymph nodes. There were metastases in the momentum. There was carcinomatosis in the body of the uterus and on the pelvis uh, peritoneum. There were metastases of adenocarcinoma and multiple uh, cancer embols in the vessels. Uh, it appeared that she had the tumor PT3 and to AM1C. And naturally, uh, we asked our colleagues, chemotherapists, so that they would help us to treat the patient, because as we know, surgery is not an independent uh, way of treatment of the patient. I didn't show here, but I don't remember. Chemotherapy was in a different clinic, but I think uh, she was microcytolite stable, and she had Kers graph uh, medical stative. She received system uh, chemotherapy, 12 courses of all folks. In October 16, she came to our centers. We complained uh, that uh, through uh, the vagina, uh, 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 waters uh, were evacuated in case of pressure of the stump. A CT was given, and in the fifth segment of the liver, there is a 2.5 centimeters metastasis in the uh, post-surgical uh, suture. Uh, there is a low dense air, and in uh, the, in the uh, stump of the rectum, uh, there is an orifice which communicates with the vagina. Rectal vaginal fistula based of MRI uh, in S5. There was another lesion to four millimeters in the sixth segment. And in case of contrast enhancement at the arterial phase, we uh, thought that it might be another small metastasis. In the anterior uh, peritoneal wall, there were two lesions, 1.1 uh, and 0.7 centimeters in diameter. And so that is carcinomatosis of the peritone metastasis to S5 of liver. As to S6, we don't know the nature of that lesion. So uh, what should be done? There were a lot of different questions, how to treat that patient further. I uh, ask the audience, what would you do? Uh, please vote. What should be done? Should we change the line of system chemotherapy, the first option? To not only Mikhail Yurevich alone. He doesn't want to offer this type of treatment. The second option, to try uh, to make a surgery with complete a site of reduction and then chemotherapy. Who is in favor of that uh, procedure? Not many people. It is surprising that Pavel is in favor. He has to explain his viewpoint. It is not uh, compliant with our visions. Probably right now, Pavel, will you explain? Will you please say us, uh, tell us a few words? Please give him the microphone. I think that now that is a different situation because in the first case we knew that there was a metastatic disease and so I would start with chemotherapy to just delay the disease. Then I would uh, give surgery and site reduction. She received chemotherapy that has already been done and probably now. We don't need uh, to have second surgery, or probably the surgery is possible and it should be followed by chemotherapy. There was stabilization of the condition uh, for one year, and probably we just have to change the line of chemotherapy. Uh, she received only one scheme, uh, 12 cycles. I think that if there is a possibility to surgically to make a surgical uh, control of the disease 
to make complete side reduction, if there is one metastasis in the liver, it should also be removed. And I expect that the effect would be better than only chemotherapy, Mikhail Yurievich. But still, why uh, do you abstain? Will you please uh, explain your vision? You seem uh, uh, to be an aggressive chemotherapist. It is quite simple because uh, surgery on progression is not quite good. And in the first option, the same. If you had a surgery at stabilization, but not when the uh, disease is bright, uh, the uh, survival without progression would be better. If now you have a complete surgery reduction in uh, micrometastasis, monoclonal antibodies, and MTK would not work, so you have to uh, give Volfox that will be not efficiently delayed for 12 months we can administer it, but the probability that it will reduce the risk of progression would be minimal, since the first site of reduction did not result in re eradication of the disease. If a uh, new set of reduction is given, probably with a high degree of probability, uh, probably everything would be uh, good, but I don't know whether it will succeed. So we should give now adjuvant uh, uh, therapy, uh, fulfurist with target therapy. If you have stable disease, there will be no progression, particularly extraperitoneal alterations, and you'll have a chance uh, to have good conditions, oncological conditions. I'm not speaking about surgery. That is not my response. So you make a surgery under good oncological conditions, even on the second line, if you reach operability and have a zero resection with metastasis in the liver, for instance, the resolution of the peritoneum, you might get a very high ex uh, life expectancy. So now we have to stabilize uh, the disease with chemotherapy. In case of stabilization, you have to solve the problem about surgical intervention. And if it progresses, then you haven't uh, uh, just uh, spoiled the uh, uh, quality of life, uh, but uh, other interventions. There is fistula, not because of chemotherapy, because it was healing up longer, but that fistula was not uh, directly caused by the chemotherapy. Well, yes, I see your arguments. Yes, we well, understand it. I've got it. In this particular issue, surgery was high likelihood will, will entail uh, a plethora of different complications, fistula, hepatic lesions, and those uh, complications will postpone chemotherapy or will make it utterly impossible at the end of the day. From, of course, uh, this uh, female patient will not live long, but we should do something to extend her life. Although I'm a surgeon, I'm in favor of surgical intervention. Interventions, but here I think chemotherapy will allow her to live longer. Yes, I've got it. I've got your arguments. When we were discussing the patient, we were aware that the risk of development of surgical complications will not allow us to come up with a full chemotherapy, which is very important for her, but we'll have to postpone this chemotherapy. Nonetheless, we adhere to the second tactics. We decided to have a surgery with uh, complete reduction, uh, complete debulk. Although I'm fully aware of the arguments of chemotherapeutics, unfortunately, as yet, we don't have a clear-cut strategy in place for such patients. Uh, of course, we discuss the situation with the patients, and surgeons have got different preferences. In that situation, we uh, decided to make surgery. 22 months after the first surgery, we saw uh, that uh, there were uh, lots of commissures and cancers, uh, and there were two metastases. Uh, and Pirop uh, shown carcinomatosis nodes on the, the diaphragmal right cupola, despite the fact that it, the peritoneal carcinomatosis index was two, but it was very difficult. Pirop situation. What would you do? Would you dwell on that? Would you stop on that and uh, have a second line of therapy for a patient or do full uh, debulking and chemotherapy? Who's in favor of the first option? Let's vote. Who's in favor of that? 
Uh, how about fistula? Yes, there was a fistula. Uh, was the tumor recurrent? No, no, it was a complication of the surgery a year after the first surgery. There was the uterol and adnexus extirpation, but no tumor, no tumor in pelvic region, no. Just a fistula, a fistula, like bad sores, I don't know uh, what uh, what is the just etiology of this. Uh, uh, but actually, it's the fistula, and she didn't know about it first, uh, actually. But how should we treat the, uh, this patient from oncology? Uh, there, are, uh, there is consuls as well, lots of commissures. Let's vote. In conservatosis, we have a rule. If there is a surgery, actually, we should assess uh, debulking. So uh, we do uh, this total resection. Let's speed it up. Who is in favor of the first option? No one. Oh, Mikhail, sorry. Mikhail Yurich is in favor. Who is in favor of the second option? Well, let's continue. We did surgical invention. Cannot move my slides. And we did the surgery with uh, debulking a typical resection of fifth segment of liver, a radial frequency ablation of six pyrotonacy on the right hand side of the frag, the liquidated uh, uh, recto uh, uh, fistula. I do the, did the reconstruction and placed, uh, and uh, there was the left uh, ureter, ureter uh, involved, and we had uh, uh, for a second time interabdominal, uh, interperitoneal chemotherapy uh, repeatedly. Uh, for the second time, the length of surgery was 11.5 years, uh, uh, five uh, hours, sorry, uh, more than one liter, 1 1.8 uh, liters blood loss. Uh, uh, colitis uh, was uh, a complication, but we managed it. Pathomorphological study shows subcellular uh, metastasis, demnocontinoma, uh, uh, and in the diaphragmal uh, nodes, uh, there were metastasis uh, of carcinoma going into the peritoneum. So, pathomorphological diagnosis uh, also confirmed what we said. Then we refer this patient to our colleagues, and the patient undergoes the treatment, anti trauma tumor treatment uh, auxiliary eight courses. Of course, we uh, study her periodically in September 2017. It will be CT, PET CT, uh, PET CT. We'll study on markers, uh, and uh, we state that there was no relapse at the moment of the checkup. Uh, the patient is young and beautiful. She insists on closure of liver stoma. What should we do uh, to close iliac stoma from the local? access to close ileus, ileus stoma via laparotomy uh, or continue chemotherapy. Uh, most of you are for the option one who are in favor of option two, me and someone else. Thank you. It's great. I'm not alone. Third option to continue uh, with the chemotherapy. Mikhail Yurevich, well, what's your comment on it? Mikhail Yurevich, uh, you're not quite consistent. Renatikan. Renatikan does work in adjuvant therapy, so what you did, she didn't need at all. Uh, it was only surgery to be done. 
uh, anything else was not needed uh, to the closure which access is better yes it's possible to close elix tomer and you didn't have to go on with those courses of chemotherapy therapy uh, actually so we'll keep referring you such patients for chemotherapy utterly impossible because it's based on the regional area uh, eligibility criteria where uh, patients live. So those territorial area uh, the institutions uh, cannot uh, accept uh, for chemotherapy patients from other regions and federal entities. Uh, but we have the principle, if we close the stormer with consumer tonus is uh, uh, in uh, uh, the medical history, we do laparotomy, second look uh, surgery. We did surgery 32 months after the first surgery, 10 months after the second surgery, broad laparotomy. Uh, there were uh, lots of commissures and, uh, and cancers, uh, and there was uh, periop find uh, uh, to the node in pelvic region with the increased part in in the uh, vagina, I was put out. I thought everything was great, but then there is a relapse of carcinomatonus. But I closed the elect uh, stoma and did the resection in the um, vagina, uh, and we didn't find the scar of tumor cells. It was not very lengthy operation. Uh, post op period was rather easy. On day eight, uh, the patient was discharged. Uh, from the hospital, CT was done on her. Uh, uh, in parietal uh, intersternum, uh, there were two uh, nodal masses, uh, uh, 0.7 and 0.9 centimeters in diameter. Oncomarkers were in the norm. Second look surgery, control checkup three months after to trace the dynamics of those uh, nodes or to have anti-tumor drug treatment. Who is in favor of the first option? laparotomy and revision of the peritoneal organs. Who is in favor of this method? Ablation, but we don't know where it is. What should we ablate? Check it out. It's somewhere in parietal, in parietal peritoneum. It's not liver. It's a peritoneal part in the region. Uh, we don't know where uh, we cannot uh, clearly identify commissures and councils there. It could be risky. Periop, maybe. Then it's the same as laparotomy and revision. I don't remember exactly. We didn't indicate PET CT, although oftentimes those patients underwent PET CT, but not in that case. Who is in favor of the second option? Uh, it's this uh, control follow up. Third option chemotherapy, same amount of people. Mikhail Yurich, you never ever raised your hand. What would you do? I raised my hand, but in such a situation, a mindful of metastasis in peritoneum, high sensitivity will be on PET CT. Well, um, so maybe I would refer her to uh, control studies. I think it's option two after three uh, months. Uh, I'll add up. We did PET CT, and there were no was no luminescence there. There was no luminescence there, and we went for surgical intervention. That's what we did because there were scars uh, and commissures and consuls, uh, and there was the endodontal gastric uh, part. And there was the fragment uh, also and in that ligament, in the diaphragm, uh, two one centimeter each nodes, uh, suspicion for conservatosis. Uh, so we removed 
the that uh, ligament did the resection of diaphragm uh, and uh, resection of liver. We remove those nodes. Post of op morphological study uh, didn't find any tumor cells. There were just scar changes. Uh, the surgery was not very long. No post op complications. The patient was discharged on day five after the surgery. That way, we did the surgery of full debulk debulking at primary carcinomatosis in relapse or peritoneal and um, metastasis. Metastasis in the liver, uh, we removed the fistula and did reconstruction uh, surgery. Uh, then we referred it to uh, the uh, secondary uh, checkup, excluded uh, the morbidity, closed the ileg stoma, and actually, we did another study because there were some suspicions based on the CT, and we closed it. And now the patient, uh, two weeks before that convention, she came for a checkup to us. And now it's 53 months after the first surgery. There is no progression of the disease. Oncomarkers were studied, PET-CT. Also, all the stomas were liquidated. She is yet very beautiful and much adored by her husband, uh, and she has sex with her husband, so it's full-fledged life. Uh, there are no relapses of rectal vaginal fistula, and uh, very briefly, I would like to come up to a conclusion. Now we're seeing that uh, it's the stabilization. It could be a relapse in future, but actually, what would you do uh, being aware of the situation? Like in the case uh, described by Yevgen Genage, would you change the strategy for treatment of that patient somehow now when you know the story or not? Our co-chairs maybe will come up with their take on it. First off, I would like uh, to congratulate you with brilliant results. As to the first part, I fully agree as to the third injury. I was amazed by the courage and audacity of surgeons doing uh, laparotomy for diagnostics and revision. We are aware that after two debulkings and peritoneal uh, laparoscopy with two high packs, there are lots of scars and commissures and canthus. Uh, I admired your method when I came to know that you had fourth surgery for the sake of those nodes with a diameter, diameter of nine millimeters because as to us in such a situation, we would just uh, follow up this patient and maybe we'll uh, refer to some actions if we saw that the nodes were growing. Uh, and we would suspect metastasis. In conclusion, I'm here to say that, mindful of those brilliant results, of course, uh, the uh, merit should be given to, not just to us only, but uh, it's the merits of the specific biology of specific tumor, of course. That's because of that. Uh, yes, I would agree with what Mikhail Yuri said. I'll start treating uh, this patient with systemic drug therapy and after that, provided I manage to do high pack and debulking, that way we might avoid those unnecessary relapses and unnecessary surgeries which were done on the patient. But now I is too late to judge uh, because there is great success. The patient is healthy and uh, she'll continue. We hope this stabilization. But I'd start from drug therapy. Are there any other opinions, judgments, or remarks from the floor? Mikhail Juric, uh, in point of fact, uh, it's uh, left side localization. No, it's right hand side localization. Left hand side localization. One way or the other, I consider that even if she would show up in my office right now for consultation at stage one, whenever it would be necessary to do the sanation to clear the gut, we could do that, but not to touch 
uh, peritoneal st- uh, metastasis, uh, wait for uh, the improvements and then to do the surgery. This one surgery would be enough. Uh, all the three others would not be necessary. Well, I'm here to remind you that the problem is with the lesions, uh, disorders uh, uh, in uh, just uh, in intestinal patency, and there is abscess and so on, so it would to be possible to remove the gut, leaving metastasis in peritoneal, then to have big, uh, actually, a big surgery. Uh, here, first we clear the gut and then systemic therapy, target chemotherapy, and then large fancy surgeries, which might uh, not entail uh, those three other surgeries. It would be second-line therapy, maybe that tactic for her would be good. It's biological characteristic and peculiarity of the tumor was such that it was controlled by yours to uh, approach. But I would not consider high pack at any stage whatsoever. No, no high pack. Even when we have myomatrixin. Uh, but uh, one, maybe we should have uh, uh, the uh, voting. We're in the abdomen and uh, there is a complicated uh, primary a tumor with intestinal patency. So we have entered the abdomen, we removed the primary tumor, and there is no difficulty in removing carcinomatosis nodes. Who would leave these nodes? Uh, so that to favor our favorite chemotherapist, please raise your hand. Even chemotherapists are not raising their hands. From my viewpoint, if you are in the abdomen, if there is a possibility, technical possibility of removing it without any risk or prolongation, I think it should be removed. Whether we need uh, chemotherapy or not, it's a different question. I mean, intraperitoneal uh, chemotherapy, that is a philosophical question, and I'm not asking it whether we need it or not. It is not so simple. One remark, dear colleagues, in our conference room, we have Andres Brendel, an expert in cytoreductive surgery, HIPEC. He has long been working with Bayatarao at Charité Clinic, and he's present in the audience. Probably it would be interesting to listen to his opinion. Andres, can you uh, make a statement? Um, thank you very much, and um, congratulations to that beautiful case. I think um, when I have just a short remark, we are not discussing about HIPEC or not HIPEC. I think we have a multimodal treatment for the patient. We, we use systemic chemotherapy, if upfront or as an adjuvant here in this setting. I think um, the results show that the treatment was very good for that patient. Of course, it is supported um, that that patient might have a a good tumor biology, um, so that surgery could help this patient to be now in a tumor-free stage. Yes, but the problem, uh, problem of tom sto. The problem is that a good biology of the tumor, we can speak about it right now because we didn't know it. And how should we realize all the possibilities between in the first surgery if we cannot reach a complete uh, site reduction biology of the tumor and efficacy of chemotherapy might be assessed only after the end of the treatment, whether the patient responded or not. Being a surgeon, I have not no information. We don't any don't have any predictors of efficacy of chemotherapy of that patient. Do you suggest to use adjuvant chemotherapy? I agree with you, but I accept you. But if it is not a symptomatic tumor, if I uh, don't have any framework when I have to make the surgery, I cannot even stand uh, because she had uh, perifocal inflammation. I had to remove the tumor. And like a person who is uh, gathering mushroom, he has to catch his train, and he's uh, seeing other mushrooms. Of course, he's going to pick them. Uh, we are behind our schedule. Probably that will be the final word. Yuri and we have a break now. 
I think that now there will be a lunch break, and the next session will start at 2 o'clock. So if there is a unique possibility, we have such interesting participants of the process, I suggest that there will be a possibility of making the presentation, and Pavel is just starting. Probably Pavel will also make a statement. Pavel Mrechkovsky, please. I agree, but we have different weapons. We have surgeons, chemotherapists, chemo, uh, and hybrid and system chemotherapy, and we can make a combination thereof. I think that if we have a possibility to control uh, the disease uh, by surgical conditions, we shouldn't use surgery because afterwards uh, the, uh, there will be no chance. If first we have chemotherapy, then the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth chemotherapy, a time will not come when uh, we'll uh, make a surgery on that patient. If we make a surgery at some time, uh, the, we'll uh, see that in this condition the resection would be impossible and that will be the case for chemotherapy. But how long can we make complete cytoreduction, complete resection by surgical uh, conditions? I would do it. Anyone else? Please, Oleg Ivanovich. All of us are attacking you. First, I should note that if the studies uh, dealing uh, random studies of uh, peritoneal carcinomatosis, there are few, there are uh, no re surgeries. So this is a unique case. Each case is unique. And here we can discuss. And uh, some people will have one opinion, others will have a different opinion. Uh, uh, there are surgeons and chemotherapists, and there are different views on the same problem. And another important thing concerning peri-surgical chemotherapy, as was mentioned by Mikhail Yurevich in his lecture, the studies are conducted. It is called CARES 6 and now uh, we enroll the patients. Uh, and the last third phase was be completed in several years, and Paul uh, probably will learn where the neoadjuvant therapy is uh, efficient uh, versus cytoreductive surgery. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, I have an active position, and uh, we have a similar problem, for instance, related to a metastatic lesion of the liver. It is also close to carcinomatosis, but there is no intraperitoneal or other chemotherapy. From my viewpoint, if it is possible to simultaneously uh, remove, I think that it should be done if it is uh, not related to high risk, if it can be done uh, within uh, one surgery. Uh, probably that will be uh, clear. And afterwards, we'll have more information after uh, uh, studies in remote tissues and uh, subjecting them uh, to traditional histological study. We'll be able to see whether the uh, following uh, regimen of treatment will offer good results. And thus, we can uh, further carry on this chemotherapy in this situation, uh, there seems to be one example or a few examples, but that is also quite indicative. I would act in the same way if we have a symptomatic uh, tumor with high risk. We have to remove everything that can be removed without any super risks. But of course, it's rather difficult to recommend uh, some reconstructive surgery against the background of such long-term intervention that was taken by Sergei Ivanovich. We have discussed it. It is easy uh, to convince me, but if 
uh, we uh, state that uh, the winners uh, should not be judged, but reconstructive surgery, if it were not done, Sergei Ivanovich, uh, no reconstructive surgery could be done later. We have to realize it, because for the sake of reconstructive surgery, no one would subject the patient to that high risk. There are thousands of uh, elements when you're lucky, both for the surgeon and uh, for the patient. Uh, we don't uh, know his fate because the risks still remain. Probably uh, she will also pose some tasks that we'll have to resolve with great debates and doubts because it is not so simple in case of such advanced uh, forms of colorectal cancer. But generally, the team that was left for dessert appeared to be uh, provoking uh, intense discussions. That's really great. We have reached at one of the third sessions uh, of that discussion. The previous two sessions were also quite interesting. They were wonderful. Uh, they were wonderful demonstrations, and I'm quite convinced that clinical cases are quite necessary. They serve uh, as a certain argument, and probably they might be subjective. Of course, we would like to have more evidence-based methods, but that is not always possible, particularly when we're speaking about carcinomatosis, which is not found so frequently. But if it is possible to help this patient, we have to help him. And I'm quite sure of that, but we always have a possibility of moving away. There will be a wonderful results of the studies in a couple of years, and probably something will change once again. And it is quite funny that the same scientists will state it, which were adherents of the opposite opinion. So I would like to thank all of you for participation in our session. And first of all, the speakers and those who took active part in the discussion. Thank you.